This is a presentation about the basics of descent energy management. Well, why do we do descent energy management? It's basically for two different reasons. One is for fuel savings and the other one for safety in the case of pilot incapacitation. Because no matter how good you can land the aircraft, if you can't put the aircraft on the approach in a good energy state, so not too high and or not too fast, then you will not be able to land the aircraft. So that's why we do descent management. The majority of the items discussed in this presentation and also in the book are techniques, not SOPs. So you might encounter different techniques as taught by different instructors, which is fine. Uh, you are invited to try out all the techniques you encounter and see which one uh, works best for you. Descent management is certainly a very complex subject and it will take time to master. So don't feel bad about yourself if you don't understand it at first. It's quite uh, normal. It's, it's very um, common that it will take time before you really understand it. Descent management is a very large subject and there are many things to cover, too many for this presentation and um, I want to keep this as simple as possible so I will only focus on the most important things. So what is the profile? A profile is a vertical path based on your distance, altitude and speed. It is important to realize um, because you will have to calculate the profile and it also contains some logic like you, you cannot be on profile but too fast or uh, on profile but too high that doesn't make sense if you're on profile you're on profile the faster you fly the lower you have to fly also not below the profile because that already takes into account your speed but if you have a certain path and then if you go faster then it will take more time before you can slow down that's why you have to fly lower Here's an example. So let's say, let's say this green line is the glide slope, so three times your distance. If you would fly on the glide slope with 300 knots, then it's not possible to slow down, even with the speed brake. The only way to slow down is to raise the nose and then reduce the speed. But as you do so, you will get high, as you see here. This, so this will not work. So to solve this problem, you have to fly lower, as you can see here. So here we're flying lower, as we start to slow down, the aircraft reduces the descent rate and gets back on the correct profile here. So how to calculate the profile? Well, first you cannot rely on the VDEV. The aircraft has a feature called the VDEV uh, connected to the yo-yo on the primary flight display. And this will give you a clue if you are high on low on profile, but it's not always correct. So you can't really rely on it. But you should never ignore it either because maybe uh, you are wrong and the uh, VDEV is correct due to, uh, usually due to an altitude constraint. So you should always pay attention to it. So how to calculate the profile? So there are other methods, but this is the method I teach. So you take your distance, multiply it by three, then you will get an altitude. And then you have to fly lower depending on your speed. So how much lower? It will use pre-computed altitudes and speeds. So if you are 300 knots, you should fly 3000 feet lower. Easy to remember, 3-3. Three, three. If you're flying 250 knots, you should fly 2000 feet lower. Again, easy to remember, two and two. If you fly at green dot speed, you should fly 1000 feet lower. When you fly at S speed, 500 feet lower. And at the last step, you add the air for the elevation. And I should also say that <coughs> You, uh, the, you pick the speed whichever is closest. So if you're flying 320 knots, you pick 300 knots. If you're flying 240 knots, you pick 250 knots as a reference. The other thing to mention is, is that the weight and the wind are not calculated for. I am very aware that there are uh, other methods and they do calculate for, especially for the wind. But I found this to be not necessary. It adds to the workload and there's really no need for that. You should do. You should take it into account, though. 
Um, so the way it's done is that you calculate if you are on profile or not. And let's say that you find that you are slightly high, maybe 500 feet high. Okay, and then you look at the weight and the wind and then decide if this situation can solve itself or is it likely that it's uh, that the situation will solve itself or not uh, if you have um, if you are 500 feet high for example at uh, 30 miles and you have a 20 knot tailwind the, the situation will definitely not solve itself and you should apply some speed brake but we'll get to back to that later and also important to remember that this calculation as shown here it only works from 50 miles if you are further than that then it will uh, look like that you are above profile but in fact you are not here are, are some examples please try to calculate and see if you have the correct answer so i will show you a distance and a speed and then you calculate if you are in profile or not and if and if you are too high or not so first question you are 32 miles at 255 knots. How high should you be? You should be at 7000 feet. So that means that if you are, for example, at uh, 6000 feet, then you are 1000 feet too low. And if you are at 8000 feet, then you are 1000 feet too high. Next question. You are at 33 miles doing 319 knots. How high should you be? and you should be at 6,000 feet. So if you are, for example, at 7,000 feet, that means you are 1,000 feet too high. Next question, you are 23 miles and you're flying at green dot speed. How high should you be? The answer, you should be at 5,000 feet. Next question, you are at 17 miles flying at green dot speed and the airward elevation is at 2,120 feet. The answer you should be at 5,500 feet using rounded figures. So what distance to use? It's very important that the distance you use for the calculation, it makes sense. For example, if the green line is the flight plan, let's say the star, then this would be correct if you would fly that entire track here. If there's traffic here and you will not get a shortcut, then you can use the um, FMS distance. However, if you would expect a shortcut, you will have to use a different distance. Now, there's different sources of distance you can use. There's the VOR distance, the range arcs, and of course the FMS distance also. But if you get a shortcut, of course, that will not be correct. And uh, you could use the ILS distance also. That's more or less the same as the VOR distance usually. And of course, not exactly the same, but for a larger distance, it will not make that much difference. And, but also keep in mind that the VOR distance, this is a straight line from your present position to the VOR. And this is usually not what you will fly either. You will fly at least a little bit more track miles to intercept the approach, as you can see here. So here's an uh, example of a typical approach where you have a, a star with some uh, extra track miles in there. And you will have to look at the display to see if you can expect a shortcut or not. There are some other uh, clues you can use uh, to know if you get a shortcut or not. We'll get back to that later. But for now, you can see that, okay, there's some traffic here and there's some traffic right there. And um, this traffic right in front of us will probably get a shortcut to Balsu or somewhere over there. And uh, we are at uh, we can expect also to get a shortcut, uh, something similar. So the track miles we get from the FMS will not be correct. Now, there's several ways to calculate that. You could subtract these two legs here to get the exact track miles if you expect a shortcut from Noko or from Vidal to Balsu. Uh, you can also look at the range arcs here and uh, use that, but uh, the um, airport is not quite in view yet, so that doesn't work in this um, skill mode. Uh, but you can also use the uh, VOR distance, so it's just 50 miles, but bearing in mind that it's straight to the VOR and that's not what will fly either, so you have to add about 5 or 10 miles or so to that. And then you can use that distance to do your profile calculation. So it's very important you use the correct distance. 
So what clues can we expect if we expect a shortcut? Well, there's, there's a number. Uh, one, for example, ATC descends you early from top of descent. That could be a clue, not necessarily, but it could be. The other one is ATC asks you to expedite descent. Uh, again, that is not necessarily a, a, a clue that you get a shortcut, but it could be though. Uh, definitely a clue is that there's no traffic or very little traffic on the star. Uh, lower cleared altitudes than usual. Like if you go to, if you fly into an airport, certain airport a lot, and uh, you also always get uh, cleared to a certain altitude, but then suddenly you get cleared much lower, that could be a clue that you might get a shortcut later on. Uh, ATC might give you early minor shortcuts uh, initially. It might be quiet on the radio. That's another clue that you could expect a shortcut. And other aircraft getting shortcuts, that's definitely a clue that you might be the next one to get a shortcut. Uh, ATC might notify you the expected track miles. That's an easy one because, of course, you can use that number straight away to make your profile calculation. And if this, especially if this uh, distance is less than the FMS distance, of course, that means that's a short shortcut. And of course, if ATC plainly tells you to expect a shortcut. So what happens when you cannot descend? This is one of the most important items from descent management. It is very, very important to start to slow down if you cannot descend. Now, how do you know that you have to descend? That means that if you are on profile, anytime you are on profile or worse above, that means that once you level off, and uh, once you are an alt star, you need to start to slow down. Why? Because that will force the trusted idle. And also that means that you can increase the speed later more than usual, than you would otherwise do. Now, once you can descend, it's important to speed up. Not with the trust, of course, with the trust idle. There are several ways to do that, but the most common is, common is to go to open descent and then speed up. So here's an example. Uh, this, in this case, this is not the ILS, but this, already, this is the profile, so it already takes into account your speed. So three times your distance minus the speed factor, as explained before. So you're flying on profile here, 300 knots, that's fine. You're not, you're not uh, too high or anything like that. But once you start to level off, you need to start to slow down. If you, if you don't, you keep the same speed, you will get trouble later. The same if you're flying level and initially you fly below your profile, but at some point you cross the point where you should start to descend to remain on profile. But if you, if you don't slow down, then if you keep the same speed, you will get trouble later. You will get high on energy. Here's another picture. So here you're flying on profile. Once you go in alt star, then that means that you need to descend, but you can't descend. And there could be several reasons for that, for an ATC restriction because there's traffic below, or maybe it's just a star restriction, or uh, usually because of uh, terrain below. Whatever the case might be, uh, uh, you, you need to descend, but you can't. You need to start slowing down right when it goes into alt star. You should start to reduce your speed. Now, at some point, you can start to descend. Maybe you get a clearance from ATC, or maybe you pass the point on the star, and then you can start to descend. That's the moment where you should go open send speed up or use a higher vertical speed, but then you should put your speed below your current speed. Either way, you should increase the descent angle down you go, and eventually you'll get back on profile. Now let's say that you uh, end up above profile. Again, just to recap, how do you know that you're on profile? You calculate it. So if you are above profile, to fix it, it's very important to know how to fix it. You need drag, which usually means the speed brake. Although it can mean the gear also if you're very high on energy. This is the only way to fix that. The FCU will not help you if you are high on energy or high on profile. It's the same thing. Uh, energy and profile is the same thing. There's nothing on the FCU which you can do to solve a high energy situation. No button you can press, no mode you can change, nothing you can do on the FCU to solve a high energy situation with one exception. And this is if you are more than 70 or 80 miles away then you can do open descent and speed up. That will make the aircraft fly longer at the denser air below where the aircraft generates additional drag, but that will take time. And that's the only situation where you might not need 
uh, the speed brake. But in any other situation, if you're closer to the airport, about 70 miles, you will need the speed brake if you are high on energy. Now, how much high on energy? Okay, that depends. Usually, if you are more than 500 feet high above profile, you will need the speed brake. If you have a lot of headwind or you're very light, then it might not be necessary, but you should at least monitor it. But definitely, if you are 1000 feet high on profile, then you should use the speed brake. There are some other very important techniques with descent management. Uh, first to recap, uh, we talked about this before already. If you need to descend but you can't, you need to slow down. It's very, very important and also important once you can descend, you need to speed up so that you can uh, capture the ILS later. You don't end up above the glide slope. And also you should start to, uh, if you start to slow down too early, once you can descend, you will get high on profile also. So that's why you need to speed up once you can descend. And if you are on above profile, you will need drag. We just discussed that. The other important thing is if you are on profile or above profile, you need to make sure that the trust remains at idle. That is very important. Now, that is not so easy to do depending uh, the situation you are in. It's, of course, easy if you fly manually. You just close the trust lever. But uh, using the FCU, it, it requires a bit of thought usually. But uh, if you uh, put the... Um, if you use open descent, it will definitely uh, put the trust at idle. Any other mode, then you have to make sure that the trust, uh, uh, excuse me, the uh, speed bug is set below the current speed. That will make sure the trust remains at idle. The other important thing, uh, thing for descent management is that uh, if you are high on profile and getting close to the approach, you need to prioritize to put the aircraft on the glide slope. It is very important because if you don't, you will get above the glide slope and then you have to do the glide slope capture from above procedure. And that means that the workload will get much higher. And if you do that uh, procedure incorrectly, it will go into alt star and alt and then the workload will go through the roof. So it's very important to put the aircraft on the glide slope, force the nose down using a high vertical speed, either open the sand speed up or vertical speed increase the vertical speed down and then put the speed bug lower so the trust remains at idle. Either way, you have to force the aircraft on the glide slope if you are close to the approach and getting high. Now, of course, that will mean that the speed will run away and then you solve that by lowering the gear or adding speed brake or both. And, but it's important to do that in that order. Put the aircraft on the approach and then at, uh, X leads at the same time uh, slow down using drag. Okay, let's talk about speed brake and flaps because that's another thing where there's some misconception about. Speed brakes are actually energy brakes. You should only use them when you are high on energy. It's quite common that new pilots, they are not quite sure when to use the speed brake and they're often criticized, no, you should not use the speed brake now or, or you should use the speed brake now. And I certainly uh, was struggling with that. When I first started flying, it wasn't clear to me at all. I didn't really understand it. And, um, but now I do, so now I can pass on that knowledge. It's actually quite simple. You need to calculate your profile and then if you're high on energy, you, 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 will need, you will need the speed brakes. And if you are not high on energy, you should not use the speed brakes. If you are on profile or below profile, you should not use the speed brakes. So how do you slow down quicker then? Let's say ATC asks you to slow down or you are approaching a speed restriction and almost busted and you want to slow down quicker. Okay, so then in that case, you will reduce the vertical speed. Go to VS mode, reduce it, perhaps even VS zero if you want to slow down very quickly. And that's how you slow down if you are on profile or below profile. The other thing is flaps. Flaps are to slow down or to lower VLS. So if you want to slow down, then okay, you add uh, flaps, of course, provided you're below VFV next. And then you can allow the aircraft to slow down. The other reason is to lower VLS. Let's say you are flying at green dot speed and you want to apply the speed brake. What will happen is VLS will go above green dot speed 
and uh, a common misconception is is that you should uh, get rid of the speed brake however if you are high on energy you should use the speed brake so do not get rid of the speed brake if vls comes up what you should do instead is ask for flap one and select your speed so you don't slow down because that's not what you want in this case and then um using because uh, flaps one is selected the sleds will go out and this will lower vls and then you can maintain using the speed brake so that, those are the only two times where you want to ask for flaps if you are not going to use the flaps either to slow down or to reduce vls so you can use the speed brake then do not ask for flaps that does not make sense okay let's talk about the different descent modes there's only three descent modes available. The first one is this, or descent. What does it do? And it's this, this is important to realize. First, it will fly, it will use the, the, the pitch, so it incre uh, um, uh, uh, increase the pitch if the speed target is lower, it will use the pitch to slow down. Once it's on your speed target, then it will try to maintain the VDEV, if it's possible. So if the speed is too low, then it might not main be able to maintain the VDEV, but at least it will try. So it's important to realize it's in this order. First, it will try to fly your speed, so it might reduce your descent rate. And after it's at your speed target, then it will try to maintain the VDEV path. Any altitude constraints are adhered to, if it's possible. And the thrust is used to maintain the speed, if it's possible. Of course, the aircraft cannot uh, use uh, less trust than idle, so it, it, you might still get high at some point. The next mode is open descent. So open descent, it forces the trust at idle, then the pitch is used to maintain the target speed. And any altitude constraints are ignored. The next mode, the last mode, is vertical speed. With this mode, pitch is used to maintain the vertical speed, which you have set in the FCU and the thrust is used to maintain the speed, if it's possible. Again, the aircraft cannot uh, apply less thrust than idle, so if you set too much vertical speed, even though the thrust is at idle, the, the speed will still run away. And also, just like open descent, any altitude constraints are ignored. And this is important to realize, that if you're flying on a star, and there is an altitude constraint which you might be able to bust. In fact, it's better if there's an altitude constraint, you should always use uh, descent mode and not try to fiddle with your speed or vertical speed and open descent um, then, uh, to, to make sure that you don't bust it. Because if you are distracted, then it might still happen. So every mode has its own advantages and disadvantages. Okay, let's talk about a standard ILS, how to fly a standard approach. First, if you pass, uh, if you approach fly level 100, you should slow down to 250 knots in most um, locations around the world, and um, make sure that you do not faster once you pass uh, fly level 100. Then, uh, once you pass 5,000 feet, all these altitudes, by the way, up above um, airport elevation. So once you pass 5,000 feet, then you should s start to slow down to green dot speed. So you can ask for activate the approach phase. If it's already activated, then you, you might uh, select the speed either way. Um, you slow down to green dot speed. Then when you are at 15 miles, ask for flap one and you s start to slow down to S speed. Then at 3,000 3, feet, then aim to be one dot below the glide slope at S speed. And then you select flap two. Gear down depends on your speed, but if you are fast, then you should uh, lower the gear 2,500 feet. And if you're uh, somewhat slower, you can lower the gear at 2,000 feet. So I will show you now an example of um, an approach which is uh, done correctly. In fact, uh, it's just in a, I linked it below in the description, so you can have a look at that yourself. Okay, so let's have a uh, look at an approach where a few things went wrong. It's a six minute video of an approach into a Hanoi in Vietnam. And uh, just have a look at it. It's uh, the video I will, um, I will show now um, shortly and then just make some notes and see if you can find what went wrong.
Okay, so the video is uh, finished and uh, ex uh, instead of me going through all the um, points which went uh, wrong on this approach, uh, I already prepared a video. Perhaps you've seen it already, this video, but uh, anyway, um, I linked it in the description below so you can have a, a look at it. Okay, let's have a, a, a small quiz. Uh, I will show you uh, a, a certain situation and you will try to figure out what is wrong with this picture. I won't wait too long with each video. You can just post the, um, uh, the video and if you uh, need some more time. Okay, so here's a picture. Here's the first picture. So the answer is um, the speed bug. Uh, above the current speed and the engines will increase trust if you do that. Here's the next one. And the answer is uh, you're doing uh, an incorrect uh, glide slope uh, capture from above and you might get into alt star and fly level on the approach which of course is not what you want. Next, you have 30 miles to go. The answer, you are above profile and you should be at 7,000 feet. That means you are 2,000 feet too high and you should start to slow down to green dot speed to force a trusted idle. Next, the speed brake is selected. Okay, the answer, you cannot do a glide slope capture from above yet because you're not yet on the localizer. Uh, the vertical speed is not set high enough you can actually set uh, 1500 feet a minute. You don't have to be on the localizer for that. And the speed brake will not make any uh, difference here. It will not make the aircraft descend faster. And in fact, it will not even slow it down. If we go back to the previous picture here, because the speed is selected, it will not start to slow down. It will just add thrust and it can't descend faster because the vertical speed is uh, mode is selected. So what will happen is the engines will just increase thrust and nothing else will change. Next one, you have 20 miles to go. And the answer is you should be at uh, 6,000 feet. That means you are 2,000 feet too high. And uh, you're uh, slowing down to F speed. And that means that the aircraft will be even higher on profile. Instead, you should use open descent and the speed bug up or vertical speed and the speed bug down and you should select the gear down and the speed brakes because if you, as you speed up of course the speed start to run away and you don't want that next question and the answer is you're on the glide slope but at green dot speed that means you're high on energy the low vertical speed set to slow down the aircraft but you will end up above the glide slope doing this so you should set a high vertical speed and select the gear down in order to slow down. Okay, that was it. Uh, please consider buying my book, uh, which has all the same information in it and more. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Thank you.